Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. Good evening. It's good to see everybody in the house this morning, this evening. Good to see all y'all faces. Thank you for following us on Facebook at Shekinah Glory Powerhouse Online. Tuning in on YouTube at COTPOH. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Like, share, comment on Facebook. It helps our ministry grow online. We're just going to start off this evening with a prayer. And I'll ask everyone to bow your heads. Thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. September the 7th, 2022, Lord. A day that we've never seen and a day that we'll never see again, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way tonight in this place, Lord, as we impartake in your bread of life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being that bread of life that came down from heaven, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving us of our sins, the ones known and the ones unknown, Father God. We know that it is not your will, Father God, that anyone should perish, Lord. So please help us to come to the knowledge of who you are, Father God why we are here at Shekinah Glory Powerhouse and how we can help grow and improve your kingdom, Lord. You said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction, Lord. So help us please do not be fools in your eyes, Father God. Let your word have free course tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Enjoy the service. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and praise the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, ain't he? The Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. We're going to magnify the Lord. Hallelujah.
Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight for Bread for Life, our weekly inspirational service for empowerment, transformation, and maturity of the believer. Please be patient with us as we work through some production glitches. Your patient will be rewarded. D4 training has kicked off. Remember, Elder Thompson will give you your schedule. God continues to bless us. We are asking you to pray for one another that God would be glorified in all of our lives. We had someone turn one yesterday. Uh, rah, rah, we celebrate you. On the third. On the third Sunday of this month, September 18th, 2022, we will celebrate hands that make a change. We are asking everyone to bring in a handful of change. Change in your hand will change someone else's life. Remember Sunday, September 18th. Shekinah glory is blessed and sustained by God, but it is also necessary that you return the tithes, give proper offerings, and sow financial seeds. Remember our online avenues of returning the tithes, giving, and sowing. Our cash app is SGPHWell, Givelify, Shekinah Glory Ministries, Panama City, Florida, 32405. And lastly, by mail, P.O. Box 16546, Panama City, Florida, 32406. These are your announcements Wednesday, September 7, 2022. Come on and bless the name of the Most High God. Somebody decree, Holy Spirit, come. Somebody cry, Holy Spirit, come. How many of us need the Holy Spirit to show up in our lives? How many of you need the manifestation of God's Spirit right now? Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Lord, let your spirit come Lord let your spirit come Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit come Lord Just go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit. Come on, light up the house. Light up the house. We need a spiritual move from God tonight. We need God's presence in the house. The power of God that will come to heal. The power of God that will come to seal. The power of God that will come to deliver.
he'll seal and deliver, Lord, by your spirit. He'll seal and deliver, Lord, by your spirit. God, we thank you for mercy. We thank you, God, for just being God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. So, God, as you show Jesus to us tonight, let him be revealed not just in this service, but that he be made manifest in our lives. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 The word of God amen. is what I stand upon. Amen. My faith amen. is ever going. You may be seated. Rest in Jesus. Rest in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit began to give me that. To speak to the people of God initially when I was looking at it rest in Jesus sounds somewhat instructive but also optional and then about five something this evening he said let a few of them know 
that is important that we change rest in Jesus to resting in Jesus. You know, when we're resting in Jesus, we have made a choice. We've decided to do something. See, when I was looking up rest and I was looking up all of the Hebrew and da 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 and all of the what uh, Webster and all of them said, they were saying that rest is when one ceases from working or they stop movement in order to relax or be refreshed. See, that rest allows one to recover strength. But rest also places one in a specified position. That's the one I like. That it places them in a specified position. That when we're resting in God, we're in a specified position. It, it, it just took me back. Tell you neighbor, there's a word from the Lord. There, there's a word from the Lord. And, and, and God is telling you to stop straining in your imaginations. Stop straining in your imaginations and start exercising faith. You see, faith is what's going to bring you the promise. Imagination is going to give you the visualization, but faith gives you the promise. There's a word from the Lord, and I like to deliver it. I believe that God has all something awesome tonight. And I believe that we're going to be partakers of his glory. Jesus spoke to us in Matthew 11, chapter, around verse 29. And he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto you your souls. Saints, I want to change your perspective a minute. I want you to think about something. If I can just get you to open your minds up just a little bit. Forget all your religious training. Forget how long you've been in the church. Forget how long you've been saved. And ask yourself, do I really know Jesus? You see, see Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his Suffering being made even conformable uh, to how he died. Because he realized that if I know Jesus, I also know that resurrection comes. Come on now. That there is a time and a period that everything has to give away and life has to enter back into you. I'm here to encourage somebody tonight to tell you that Jesus said rest in him. Because you've been in a dead situation a long time. When Jesus came to the earth, he came to the earth for mankind. That's the only reason Jesus came. For that mankind could have dominion reestablished. Let me, let me say it again. I, I know our sins were forgiven, but he came, he came for mankind as a whole. Sins being forgiven are just part of the benefits package. But Jesus came for mankind. Hear me and hear me clarity, with clarity. He came with, for mankind, and yet it seems like we pray more for our needs than we do for one another. And so now Jesus came that we might have life. Come on now. And, and, and he came that we have something that we can look forward to, and yet the driving force between most people's prayers are their needs. We want to be like Jesus. We got to start praying for one another. We got to stop praying for materialistic things and pray for one another. If God manifests, if he brings to pass, if he shows some material things, in somebody else's life, come on now, and you prayed for that thing, you ought to give God some glory. But you should not be upset with God when it didn't show up in your life because he said, what you make happen, for someone, God will make it happen for you. 
We started in Hebrews chapter 4. And that's where I began and I, I'll move fast. Hebrews chapter 4, let us therefore fear. That's a promise being left of us. Left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. So let's get our minds in the right place. Rest. Somebody say rest is a place that I have to take my mind. Rest is a place that I have to take my soul. Rest is a place that I have to take my spirit. You see, he said in verse 2, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Faith. Somebody say faith. faith. Tell your neighbor, still come back to your faith. You can have imagination, but at the end of the day, faith is the component that's required for your fruitful manifestation. He said, but we which have believed, verse 3, Hebrews 4, 3, for we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, therefore, he goes to verse 9, he said, therefore there remaineth a rest to the people of God. I want to encourage somebody that been going through. I want to tell you right now, I don't want you to talk about how we survived. I don't want you to talk about how we come out unscathed. I don't, want, I don't want to talk about that. What I want to talk about is how we're finding the light that leads us to resting in God. That when we rest in the confidence of who God is, somebody say who he is. Not what he can provide, but who he is. When we rest in the confidence of who he is, we'll start taking hold of things and we'll have no problem getting the rest that we need for our mind, the rest that we need for our souls, the rest that we need for our spirits. But, 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 I look at Hebrews 4 and 11. He said, let us, my goodness, labor. This tells me that I'm not going to just move into an assumptive state and enter rest. That it's going to cost me something. I want to talk to somebody that find, that's finding themselves somewhat exasperated today. You've given up. Come on now. You've lost hope. You don't know what you feel. You don't feel anything. You don't feel sad. You don't feel happy. You don't feel empty. You don't feel full. You don't feel anything. You simply have displaced yourself from your emotion. But God has sent me to tell you, no, no, no. You've got to enter into rest. If you're broken in your emotions, rest in the confidence of who God is. Because God still rewards those who diligently seek him. But they have to look to enter into that rest. And tell you, you're going to have to labor to do that. And, and labor means that you have to automatically, you have to start using your mind, your imagination. You have to start using it as a bulldozer to push away those things that have been working against you all your life. Somebody say, all my life. I don't have real people yet. Somebody say, all my life. See, see, people want, want you to get up here and they want you to shift automatically to like poverty has been the only enemy in your life. But poverty hasn't been the only enemy in your life. Matter of fact, Poverty was a companion. You didn't treat poverty like he was an enemy until all of a sudden now we're getting some understanding. But come on now, poverty was a companion. I don't have real people yet, but I'll teach it anyway. He said, when you don't exercise faith, you're going to fall into an example of one who is an unbeliever. And if God can't trust you to show people that you believe in him, who can he trust? I want to encourage somebody to walk into your blessings tonight. I want you to take possession of them. Take possession of them. See, 
See, I, I don't know about you. See, I, I, I have a lot of air blessings. You understand what I'm saying? I, I have a lot of air blessings because I call them air blessings because I speak them into the atmosphere, knowing that as I speak my word seed into the atmosphere, it now takes root, it takes ground, and God's going to give me fruitful manifestation because my faith is going to water it. The heart is established. Your heart has to be established. Are you in a bad situation? But your situation, come on now, should not be the dominant predicate. It should not predict everything that's going to happen to you. I wish I had a real person that would just be honest and say, I'm in a bad place right now. Man of God, I'm in a bad place right now. Man of God, I'm in a bad place right now. But God, somebody said, but God showed me the way out. Come on now. And the way he said that you come out of that you stop fighting, are you hearing me? Sometimes you just got to give. They tell you when you're swimming and you're about to drown, sometimes you got to let the current carry you. When you swim against the currents, you're more apt to drown because you're going to become tired. We're talking about rest. Somebody say rest. Let me teach. Let me, let me move into the word. I, I, I was just filling y'all out. God doesn't want us to have schisms amongst us. He doesn't want us to be a split or a divided people. And he definitely doesn't want it to come because we have differences in opinions or belief. Psalms 133, behold how good, pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even the Aaron's beard that went up down to the skirts of his garment as the dew of Hermon, the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there, somebody said there, the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore. In other words, there was a coming down. Somebody say a coming down. Okay, neighbor, when we come together, God will come down. My goodness. When we unify, God will come down. God is saying, I can two walk together except they be agreed, Amos 3 and 3. He tells you in Ephesians 4 and 3 that you got to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. God wants us to come to a common place. Somebody say a common place. A meeting place. He's not just meaning a church. That's not what, he, that's not what he's saying. You know what? You can, you can get together with two or three and agree somewhere and make something change. But when you leave a brother or a sister all by themselves, my goodness, you're not hearing me. There's, a, there's so long that it's isolation for insulation. And then all of a sudden, they come under a vicious attack. Can I side up for a minute? Because y'all looking all to the east, the left, the west, the south, the north, the floor, everywhere. I'm right here. On my phone, every now and then, I see some things from the jungle. And I watch how lions hunt and how hyenas hunt. And they hunt a lot of the time in packs. And they don't necessarily go after the animal's breast line initially. They take away the ability to stand. <laughs> you know, hear me. They go after the legs. Because they know if they can get him down, they can get a good grip on his breath line. Oftentimes when, when we're going through things, the enemy comes after your walk. He comes after your walk. He, he tries to get you where you're not stabilized in your walk. But he really wants your breath. Because you can live and not walk. Are y'all hearing me? But when you lose your breath, 
And when the enemy seeks to attack you, and the only reason I say that because the Bible says as a roaring lion, he walks about seeing if your legs are available for him to take you out of your walk. For him to take away your strength so that he can get your breath. But I come to tell somebody tonight, one of the videos I saw, there was about eight of them on it. And the thing was making an awful noise. And you could tell that he was perishing. But that same noise that he was making caused the herd to turn around. Oh, y'all, y'all didn't hear me. See, sometimes we got to make some noise when we hurt. Am I right? Sometimes we got to make some noise when we're broken. Sometimes we got to let God know that we are broken. Sometimes we can't, while we sit here trying to be superficially strong, sometimes you got to let God know God is over here. I'm hurting over here. God, I need you over here. God, I need you to show up over here because when God can hear from you, he will show up. But if you're silent in your struggle and you're silent in what you're going through, the enemy is going to take you out because he came with plenty of imps. But when we call on Almighty God, my goodness, I, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, I don't know he's saying that when there's some praises, my goodness, that's in the body of believers that know how to praise God in the midst of going through something. He said, when they start crying out, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, help me. Lord, bless me. Lord, pull me out of this situation. All of a sudden, when the church starts showing up, somebody going to be set free. It's on you. It's on you, the one that's silent in your tongues right now. It's on you because you don't know how to cry out for Zion. Somebody ought to be saying, Lord, help my brother. Lord, help my sister. Lord, help. Lord, help. Send help to Zion. Lord, help. 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 Send help to Zion. Lord, help. Lord, help. Lord, help. Lord, help. Glory to God. Pride before destruction. Holy spirits before the animal take you down. Too haughty and too prideful to say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, help me. Lord, bless me. Lord, I'm broken. Tell him, Lord, I'm broken. Lord, I'm broken. Lord, I'm broken. Bless God. Bless him. Come on, bless him, Zion. Bless him, Shekana. Come on, bless him. Bless God. Bless him. Bless him. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Let me tell you something here. This is not a prophetic wind or a prophetic ship. This is the truth. Some of you so bound that you don't know how to open your mouth. All to go around the room and point to everyone and make you all let it go at one time. But I'm going to go online and just give them an opportunity first. Online, if you'll just holler out to God, Lord, help me you'll get his help. Now in here without me pointing at you, you need to make your mouth say it, not your body say it. You need, it, it had to come from the inner core of you. Where God know that your spirit man, not your natural man, y'all hear me, not your carnal man, but your spirit man is saying, Lord, help me. Do I have anybody in here 
that's willing to just, just cry out to him for a minute. ourselves resting in Jesus Christ. Tell God thank you right there. Tell God thank you right there. Tell God thank you. Point at three people and just prophesy to them and tell them, I send the Lord's help your way. I send the Lord's help your way. I send the Lord's help your way. place of praise him right there. That's a good place, place to praise him right there.
when a 91-year-old mother can pray and ask God and sing and ask God to help, all of us should be able to. Am I right? Huh? Come on, give God some glory. Give God some glory. You know what to do. You know what to do. You know what to do. Speak life to yourself right now. Speak life to yourself right now. Now be prophetic and say, I receive God's help. Lord, I receive your help. God, I receive your help. By the help of God. By the help of God. God of praise. Somebody, somebody declare, I receive your help, God. I receive your help. Divine assistance, I receive it. I receive divine assistance. Come on, come on. Sometimes we say I'm tired of assistance. We talking about divine assistance now. And God, use whoever you have to use. Come on now. But let it be part of your perfect plan. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a praise. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm not, I'm not going to try to bring correlation or any piece of understanding to a divine move of God. I believe in the power of God prevailing in his house. And God has blessed us tremendously. Pronounce somebody blessed. Look at them. Tell them I pronounce you blessed. I pronounce quickly. I pronounce you blessed. Yes, yes, yes. We're getting ready to move forward. Ready, ready for the return of tithe, the giving and offering, the manifestation of God's power. Bless the name of the Most High God.
give this people favor yeah. in the sight of everyone that's looking. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, <laughs> and when ye go, tell them you got to go now, you got to go, but, but, but when you go, and when ye go, you shall not go out empty. I come to prophetically decree that to somebody. When you go, you're not going empty. They're going to look at you, and they're going to say, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done wonders, wonders for them. He, miracles, signs, and wonders follow when we pull on his ear. And he hears, he responds, and he blesses his people. Father God, we thank you for the word that you've given tonight. Thank you for your people, God, in the faithfulness, God, in the tenderness, and all life, God. Continue to empower them, God. Move them beyond the situation and their circumstances, God. Those that are online that may not know you as Lord and Savior, God, I pray that, pray that the drawing power that's in the name of Jesus draw them closer to you. And God, I thank you right now for the spirit of revival in the house, the spirit of restitution, God, restoration and recovery, God. Thank you for renewal of mind. And I give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 God said in his word in Deuteronomy, I believe it's 6, chapter, verse 23, I think he said, I brought you out to bring you in brought you out to bring you in. Be blessed. Have a great night. God bless you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for coming out. God's blessing rest upon you.